So now that Boston, as maybe we expected, but the odds certainly did not, has lost a game number two at home against the Cleveland Cavaliers, let's reset where the market is. Again, seven playoff games for the Celtics, the NBA's best team throughout the entirety of the regular season, who has been the NBA title favorites all year long and remains that in minus money the Celtics have played seven playoff games in this postseason run DRS we'll get to those odds in just a moment the Celtics have remained uh, or, or have played seven playoff games throughout this postseason run they have either won five by 14 plus points or they have lost two by double digits booked as a 13 point favorite or higher Boston has been a nine and a half point favorite in all seven playoff games they have played so far and a great stat find by our producer Joe Frieza Boston has pretty much been this expected team to contend for the Eastern Conference crown and the NBA championship the last three years of course it was the disaster in 2022 against the Golden State Warriors in the NBA finals last year coming up short in the Eastern Conference finals and now this year the NBA title favorites they are just 14 in 14 at home in these last three playoff runs they're 16 and 7 on the road they've been sensational away from TD Garden but you and I spent the point throughout much of this regular season certainly down the stretch as Boston clinched the NBA's best record that playing inside TD Garden where even after last night's loss in game two to Cleveland they are 40 and 6 straight up through the entirety of this season regular and post maybe that home floor advantage inside TD Garden is not something that really works in Boston's favor. Yeah, we'll see. But again, it's seven games, and we are shocked by this because of how dominant the Boston Celtics were throughout the season on their home court. So you figured, like, if you said, okay, let's just say they do make a run into the NBA Finals. How many games did they lose before they got to the NBA Finals at home? One? Like, that's probably what you're trying to equate to on based on what they did this year on their home court. But having said that, it's the playoffs. It's a different game here. Like, the pressure is ratcheted up in every moment. And also, sometimes, again, you try to take the human element and put it into it, Ben. And we tried to, I tried to ask George that same question. And again, they're professional athletes. Yeah. They're going to bring their lunch pail to work every day and go after it. But I sort of wanted to get that sentiment of, like, is everybody in the city of Boston going like, boy, this is really boring because we expected to be here and I just can't wait till the NBA finals come so we actually get a, an opponent that we can really cheer on and say, boy, this could be a really good game. And maybe that creeps into the Boston Celtics. And there aren't any excuses here. But Porzingis being that lineup and out of that lineup, that's a pretty big deal at this point. And it's not to say that that's the difference between winning and losing against an inferior opponent. It's not, but it sort of adds to that element. But also, from these game number ones, you wipe the team off the floor. Ah, game number two at home, we should easily win this one. Then you get punched in the mouth by a team that shoots close to 50% from three-point range and steals that game. Look, they're professionals on the other side as well. They're going to put up their best efforts as opposed to Karen. Ah, what are we going to do? Just go in a 4-0 sweep and we'll head to Cancun ourselves. I'm not technically surprised that they're losing games during the round, but let's see again how they respond. Because the question is, right. not you losing game two, but if you still win in five games, like, wow, that was an easy series for the Boston Celtics. Yeah, but the idea that a baked-in loss for Boston is going to happen really shouldn't be the case for a team expected to win an NBA championship and the title favorites. It's still playoff basketball. Yes, on paper, Cleveland is nowhere as good as Boston. Miami shorthanded without Jimmy Butler certainly was not as well. But the idea it's like, oh, okay, we'll give them one, is loser behavior. And it makes zero sense for a team we expect and will judge and evaluate only by winning the Larry O'Brien trophy, not gentlemen sweeps in round one and two. Boston entered game two last night as a minus 8,000 series outright favorite, still a heavy favorite in this series entering game three in Cleveland, minus 1,200. But Donnie, we had a similar conversation about the series price for the Celtics and the Heat as we will have right now because a couple of numbers stood out to me. Let's look at those series odds once again. For this series to end in five games, that gentleman's sweep is the expected outcome. It's minus 115. For the Celtics in the series correct score market to win this series in five games, four games to one, it's minus 110. For Boston now to cover the series spread that is in their favorite two and a half games, that would be winning in game five, it's plus 104. It was the same case against Miami. If you think the Celtics give Cleveland won, but accomplished another gentleman's sweep. There's your best price. 
the Celtics series spread laying two and a half games at plus 104. Yeah, that one would make some sense. But also, if we're looking at those price points there, yeah, game five in a gentleman's suite, minus 115, I'm not paying that price because that would signify that, you know, you're going to handle your business, at least get that split in hand. I like game six, actually, at the plus money price, I think makes a little bit more sense because sure. I do expect that we are going to get a win out of Cleveland on their home court and say, wow, that's crazy. If you said, excuse me, expect it's going to be five games. I get that. But this team's a little bit better than the Miami Heat where it's like, hey, let's see what we get out of game three and game four from the Heat who basically didn't show up on their home court. But rightfully so. They just didn't have any offensive talent to even match up with Boston. Let's also see if Jared Allen gets back into the equation yeah. for Cleveland to really help them. As we talked about, he was a great player during the regular season. But if I'm a betting man, you're always looking for the plus money prices out there. A gentleman sweep coming up at minus 115, I'm not necessarily down with that because that means the Celtics are going to win the next three games. Can they do that? Yes. Right. Did they do it in round number one? Absolutely they did. But I do think game six here is a chance for the Boston Celtics on the road to close them out at a nice plus money price. I think that's worthy of a wager as opposed to five games. Donnie, I bet the Celtics laying two and a half games after they lost to Miami in game number two in the opening round. And of course, it came to fruition because it felt like game two after a franchise playoff record, 23 made threes out of Miami was an anomaly. It would be the Mm -hmm. only one. I don't feel that way against Cleveland. Last night was a lost opportunity for Boston, but I expect the Cavs to get one more win in this series. So I agree with your point. I'm not betting it just if you're looking for the best price for pretty much the Celtics to pull off the gentleman sweep. It is that series spread. Now, despite losing last night in a series tied at one game all, the Celtics remain an odds-on favorite to win the NBA championship. The T-Wolves, the second best price at 3-1. to one. The Thunder, 8-1. to one. The Mavericks, plus 950. The Knicks with the injury uncertainty with OG and Anobi, despite being up two games to none in their second round set against Indiana, moved back ever so slightly to 15-1. to one. Donnie, let me ask you the question like this. Will the NBA championship winner this year come from the Eastern Conference or the Western Conference? I'm still going to stick to it and say the Eastern Conference because the only one team we're actually rooting on that we think has an interest would be the Boston Celtics. So it's that old, like, do you take the Celtics or go up against the field, which the field is basically the Western Conference who has great opponents. But I still get back to this notion. The Celtics are good. Porzingis is going to be on his way back. And when it's all said and done, when they do get to the NBA Finals, home court advantage is in Boston, which is a big deal here. That's the way I still would play this out. Even though the Western Conference is much, much better, you can make an argument for multiple teams, and you can only make one argument for the Celtics in the East, it's still the Celtics for me, Ben. So it's really interesting because I'm not so sure. I have a Boston Celtics price at plus 220 to win the NBA title that I bet on March 20th. I'm hoping to get to that point where I can even have the hedge out potential, and I think Boston will be a series outright favorite for an NBA Finals against anybody from the Western Conference because of that baked-in home floor advantage. But I'm starting to worry. Because there is that idea that the Celtics are going to give you a couple because they're just going to have one off night. Maybe it works against the shorthanded Heat. Maybe it works against the inferior Cleveland Cavaliers. It probably even works in the Eastern Conference Finals against the banged-up Knicks or the Indiana Pacers. It is not going to work against whoever wins the Western Conference. The T-Wolves, Thunder, Mavericks, or the reigning champs, the Nuggets. But I do think you will be locked in on a night-to-night basis much more than you are now because you're supposed to roll the basketball out and beat the Heat and the Cavaliers. Now, the Knicks, when they come to town, that is a rivalry. That's a lot of fun. And also, when you go to New York and Madison Square Garden, we know how much these players all love to play in that big spot. Then when you get the NBA Finals, you're not taking anything for granted. Let's see what we get out of the Celtics if the remaining parts of the series against the Cavaliers and reevaluate. They'll get through this series. just a matter of when and how quickly they do it. But why are we taking even the opening two rounds of a playoff series for granted? It makes no sense. 